Tesla quarterly sales coming in over the weekend, or delivery is rather disappointing. How big of a disappointment was it? In this video, unsurprisingly, media talking heads get Tesla's Q2 completely wrong. New data shows the US automotive industry is imploding, with the one obvious exception being Tesla who continue to slay it, and more Wall Street reactions to Tesla's Q2, plus some truly bizarre slash embarrassing forecasts. So let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. If you wanna take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla the valuation model at the investor support level and above. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment themed merch in the merch store. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. First up, a very short clip within the mainstream finance media, a failed attempt at digesting Tesla's Q2 results. Tesla quarterly sales coming in over the weekend, or delivery is rather disappointing. How big of a disappointment was it? Oh man, so look, I don't want to be too mean here, but we just have to call a spade a spade. I don't know who this person is. Whatever her name is, obviously has absolutely no fucking idea what she's talking about. And it's okay to have no idea what you're talking about, but if you're talking head in the mainstream finance media, most people watching would assume that you do in fact know what the fuck you're talking about. The idea that Tesla's Q2 results were disappointing is just absolutely farcical. They're in line with expectations. What's disappointing is the fact that Tesla's Shanghai factory was forcibly shut down for over three weeks, meaning the company lost an incredible amount of production and therefore deliveries for the quarter. This just goes to show how incompetent the mainstream finance media is. Instead of thinking and trying to understand anything, it's like, huh, that number's smaller than the last quarter, it must be disappointing. That's the only possible explanation. Maybe I'm just a harsh critic. But it is my belief that a talking head in the mainstream media, whether it's finance media or just the general media, making declarations like Tesla's quarter was disappointing should actually be able to back that up instead of just be talking shit. If you're ill-informed and unaware, better just not to say anything at all or say, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I think this quarter was disappointing. And I'm not picking on the host or the anchor here. It's not her fault. It's the producers of the show who allow her to say shit or feed her shit that's completely off the mark. Well, it was, they had expected, and investor community analysts had expected a drop off because the factory in Shanghai was not operating for several weeks. We know all about the big lockdowns in Shanghai and of course Tesla was affected by that. Well, Alex was very diplomatic in his response. I think the translation there was, what the f*** are you talking about, you moron? We knew there were lockdowns. This isn't disappointing. This is an inline result. Don't talk if you don't know what we're talking about, you idiot. Obviously, Alex has not attended the SMR School of Diplomacy. The, the slight issue was that it was even fewer deliveries than had been telegraphed and had been anticipated. So clearly a certain amount of cause for concern. The comments since then seem to be broadly optimistic. The factory has been going gangbusters, we hear, since then. So as long as the demand continues to be there, then, you know, the issues of supply tend to be just a blip rather than the long-term concern. I guess, are those issues of demand there? Now, they say there's no such thing as a stupid question. And I tend to agree. The whole point here, ask questions. There's nothing dumb about asking a question not knowing the answer. However, if the question you're asking is something whose answer is easily attainable, obvious, and has been available for years, e.g. Uh, no demand problem, Tesla selling of a vehicle they make will for years to come, I'm not necessarily sure the same saying fully applies. Maybe I'm being too harsh, but from my perspective, it's obvious Tesla's gonna sell every vehicle they make for the next decade plus. It's clearly not a demand issue. We know how long the wait times are for Tesla vehicles. Depending on where you're ordering, what trim, you could be waiting three, six, nine, 12 plus months to take delivery. That's after enormous 10, 20, 30 plus percent price increases over the last 18 months. Obviously, not a demand issue. So again, I mean, ask the question, sure, no dumb questions, but it is pretty dumb to ask a question to which the answer is obvious and has been available for years. Because we've heard from Elon Musk, he talked about with John Micklethwaite, that interview we heard from prior weeks there. We've heard about him cutting staff. So where is the concern coming from then? The f I'm so confused right now. It's almost as if her producers have said Tesla had a terrible quarter. Everything's bad. The world's ending. There's lots of concern about Tesla stock. Get this guy on to talk about all the concerns relating to Tesla. And she's just trying to dig. Well, where is the concern? You telling me the quarter wasn't a disappointment because the factory was shut down? You telling me there is actually demand? So what should we be worried about? How do we scare people watching this program? How do we freak them out and make them worry? Because that's how you get people's attention and advertising dollars. So to answer the question, where is the concern then? In your imagination. 
Well, he had said that this quarter was likely, so before these production issues, was likely to be flat compared to the directly preceding calendar quarter, not not a year earlier. It was up quite substantially still on a year earlier. Now, that perhaps gets at some of those issues of demand. We have generally seen maybe there's some sort of correlation between people who buy Teslas and performance of crypto, for instance. Mm. These are sort of relatively macro factors that can affect demand for those vehicles. It is still trading at a, you know, hefty premium, a hefty multiple, it trades something like 59 times forward earnings. You compare that to the established car makers who tend to trade at less than 10 times forward earnings. So there's a lot of um, enthusiasm still around the stock. And the, yeah. the 12-month target price is still, I think, $150 above the 600 and something is at right now. I, I find this so interesting. What should we be comparing Tesla to when it comes to valuations? Who are its peers? I'll take that one. I have with me here a list of Tesla's peers. All right. Number one. Uh, oh, yeah, no, that is actually the list of Tesla's peers. Nothing on it. I mean, it, it, ultimately, Tesla's slightly dislocated from the reality of the automotive industry. I, sometimes, you know, the car makers that tend to be trading right up there that aren't in the electric space, think about something like Ferrari, right? It's a, it was framed itself quite well as a luxury brand, cons- comparing itself to the like of Caring and, and, and those guys. It trades at about 35, 40 times forward earnings. So maybe that's a place where Tesla ultimately settles. You know, don't forget, Tesla still, I mean, Tesla already makes a lot more cars in any given year than Ferrari does. So nothing in the old automotive space is quite directly apples to apples. Well, I could definitely learn a few things from Alex about diplomacy. Of course, that would assume that I actually want to become more diplomatic. (laughs) Clearly not. Of course, he's right. There's nothing comparable anywhere. He was doing his best there. Oh yeah, maybe Ferrari, but even not Ferrari. The point there, as we saw on my list of Tesla's peers, there are none. Tesla is in a league of their own. Trying to look at Tesla through the lens of any other company, any other industry is absolutely brain dead. But this is of course what most people on Wall Street are doing and many retail investors as well. A decade ago, I could forgive people for making this mistake. What box should we jam Tesla in? Which cell does this go in my spreadsheet? Okay, definitely car company, okay, no problem. But in 2022, there's literally no excuse. And now onto the catastrophic implosion of the US automotive industry, the clear exception being Tesla. Great tweet here from Alex Voigt, who you should all be following on Twitter. Check this out. Picture is worth a thousand words. Tesla, yellow. We're looking at Q2 USA vehicle sales change year over year. In other words, a year ago versus now. How many more or less vehicles are these companies selling in the United States? Notice, Tesla year over year US sales up 50 plus percent. Not bad. Porsche, distant second. Up, I don't know, 2% maybe, give or take, and everybody else down dramatically. And I'm gonna run through this whole list because it's kind of important. You can see this visually, but let's just run through these brands. Obviously not all information is currently available. This doesn't paint the entire picture, but you can fill in a few of the blanks. Mitsubishi US sales in Q2 year over year down significantly, about 15%. GMC sales down almost 20%. Stellantis sales down almost 20%. Subaru sales down almost 20%. Hyundai Kia sales down almost 20%. BMW sales down over 20%. Toyota sales down over 20%. Audi sales down about 30%. VW sales down nearly 40%. Alfa Romeo sales down nearly 40%. Nissan sales down nearly 40%. Mazda sales down over 40%. Honda sales down about 50%. I know I said a picture is worth a thousand words, but allow me to chime in here. This is indicative of what's happening to the entire automotive industry right now. It's almost as if this is an indicator that consumers want to buy compelling electric vehicles and don't want to buy ICE vehicles. Of course, these automotive manufacturers are going to be hiding under the guise, oh, it's the supply chain, the chip shortages, we couldn't get the parts, we couldn't make the cars. And yes, that is part of what's happening but i've been banging the drum on this for a long ass time vehicle sales from these manufacturers will not recover consumers don't want to buy ice vehicles it's a coincidence at this point in time there's been some major global supply chain challenges meaning some of these companies can't produce and therefore sell as many vehicles as they previously would have liked but at the exact same time that this is happening there's an enormous catastrophic contraction a violent collapse in demand for ice vehicles Some of these automotive manufacturers may have figured it out behind the scenes, although they're not saying it out loud, and others may be completely oblivious to this fact, assuming, oh, well, once we get the parts and the chips, we ramp up our ice production, people are just going to keep buying them, right? (laughs) Wrong. And this is a strange thing to me. People just don't seem to be getting this, and many of the automotive manufacturers, at least publicly, aren't recognizing or acknowledging this fact either. But as I said, this data, in a nutshell, sums up exactly what's happening to the global automotive industry right now. You make compelling electric vehicles, customers want them, and they're willing to wait a long time and pay a massive premium. If you make ice vehicles, customers don't want them. And all the dimwits on Wall Street and many of the retail investors out there assuming that Ford and GM, name your fucking automotive company, is gonna keep selling vehicles, they'll get back to their peak volumes once these supply chain challenges are sorted out, is in for a very, 
rude and financially catastrophic awakening. And the Wall Street analyst reactions continue to flow through after Tesla's Q2. This from old man Sachs. I think I said that right. Q2 2022 deliveries increased 27% year over year to about 255,000. June production highest in Tesla's history. Now, before we get too much further into this, we see here a 12 month price target on Tesla stock of $1,000 representing <laughs> unbelievably 46.7% upside, but it gets even more unbelievable. Every time I look at these kind of things, I just, I'm thinking to myself, bro, am I really that high that I just don't understand or are these clowns that wrong? We are looking at EPS estimates in particular. I've highlighted 2022, 23 and 24 here in yellow. Old man Sachs have Tesla doing $10 in EPS for the full year in 2022, $13.50 in 2023 and $14.10 in 2024. This will not age well. In fact, this will age so poorly that somebody please remind me to roast these clowns in a few years time when we have the actual numbers. I honestly don't know what planet these folks are on, but it's clearly not Earth. In fact, I don't even think it's in this universe. Just for some context, I'll share my own work in progress EPS estimates. I'm making some adjustments to my Tesla valuation model. That'll be posted soon exclusively on Patreon. Sign up with the card in the corner or the link at the pinned comment. This is what produces my price targets. In my bear case, as in a 3% probability, one in 30-ish chance that everything that can go wrong does go wrong. Where does Tesla end up? I've got 2022 EPS of $11 versus their 10. In 2023, around $12. In 2024, around 17. And they're at 14.10. Keep in mind, this is my bear case. What is my base case? How does that compare to this? That's some more apples for apples comparison. My base case EPS for Tesla this year, approaching $14. My base case EPS for Tesla in 2023, $21 per share. And in 2024, $33 per share. Now, it is entirely possible that I'll be wrong. I just want to illustrate the gaping void, the enormous chasm between their base case, I mean, assuming this is a base case, estimates for Tesla EPS and my own. We're not that far off the mark this year. There's about a 40% variation. We move forward to 2023 and we're about a 60% variation. And by 2024, my EPS is literally double where old man Sachs is. Now, either I'm wrong, or well, they're wrong, or we're both wrong, and the truth is we will both be wrong, but I just want to illustrate the gap here. It's like everyone on Wall Street is estimating Tesla's just going to have incremental growth, their margins, oh yeah, they might get a little bit better. Meanwhile, I'm factoring in everything that's going on here, the economies of scale, the increase in production, the improving margins, autonomy, increasing take rate on FSD, and so on. Let me tell you where I think these fools are going wrong, and I do want to underscore fools, because these EPS estimates are absolutely foolish. $14.10, EPS, 2024, what are you guys smoking? Can somebody please explain to me? No, seriously, please explain to me. Let's just take 2022 and 2024 here. If they're at $10 in EPS in 2022, and an increase of 40% to 2024, you would assume just everything else being equal, and I know they're gonna think, oh, material costs going up, blah, blah, blah. All other things being equal, that assumes maybe Tesla's business grows about 40% between 22 and 24. In other words, based on their estimates, Tesla delivers about 1.4 million units this year in the full year 2022 and not even 2 million vehicles delivered in 2024. It just doesn't add up. We've got Berlin ramping up. We've got Austin ramping up. We've got Fremont eking out incremental capacity increases and we've got a massive expansion at Shanghai. There is no universe in which Tesla doesn't increase their deliveries by significantly above 40% between 2022 and 2024. And again, I know these guys would argue, okay, material costs are increasing so that'll eat into margins a little bit. Not that much. Countering this, not only Tesla's price increases, but also economies of scale. The more vehicles they're producing, the lower the overhead per vehicle, meaning the margins inflate automatically. This is a counterforce. I cannot for the life of me come up with any logical explanation as how we get the $14.10 of EPS in 24. Tesla could be around this mark in 2022. Anyway, I'm done roasting these folks for now. Let's get back to the actual research note. Let's read through a few quick highlights from this note. As we know, Tesla delivered about 255,000 vehicles and produced about 259,000 vehicles in the second quarter, with June being the highest production month in Tesla's history. And a quick aside on this one, here we are over on Twitter, a retweet from Gary Black with some additional information. Retweeting Jose Calvino, I'm sure I butchered your name, sorry there my friend, who reverse engineered Tesla's June production just approximately, keeping in mind there's a wave and so it's not perfect, but it is interesting to know. Based on year to date, top OEM global battery electric vehicle sales that were up till May. Tesla delivering just over 406,000 vehicles in total for the first five months of the year, meaning Tesla quote unquote produced, and again, there's inventory here, so it's not a perfect proxy, around 150,000 or so vehicles, an annualized rate of around 1.9 million vehicles per year. Gary adding some context here, Tesla delivered about 158,000 units in June, equal to a run rate of about 1.89 million units per year, which is 473,000 per quarter. July will be less due to the 14 day Gigafactory 3 upgrade. This should lead analysts to increase full year 2023 volumes and EPS estimates as we've just seen what the f are Goldman Sachs smoking seriously with Berlin and Austin still ramping back to the research note 
Tesla reported preliminary Q2 deliveries, blah, 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 blah. We all know this shit, okay? Let's skip ahead to the stuff that actually means something. Reason the deliveries were down a little bit because of the COVID lockdowns. Still don't know what the fuck they're thinking over in Shanghai. Jesus Christ. Tesla stated that June 2022 was the highest production month in the company's history. And this is important because we now know that they fully ramped back to previous peak levels, obviously. And important to note, for those who don't pay attention, the lease mix as in how many of these vehicles were leased versus purchased outright was 4% of deliveries in 2022 Q2, identical to the first quarter of this year. Implications and analysis. We believe 2Q delivery numbers were heavily impacted by the insane, fascist, futile, and inhumane shutdowns in Shanghai. Might have misread that a little bit. We estimate that the restrictions in China may have been a roughly 100,000 unit impact in 2Q based on CPCA data. And one, spot on. And two, I'm stunned to hear anyone on Wall Street actually do this very basic math. I've been saying this over and over and over now for a few months. They will have lost about 100,000 units of people. No, they haven't, bro. Of course, these comments appear to be manifestations of the Dunning-Kruger effect. We know exactly how much volume Tesla lost during the month that was actually shut down. But as I've said, Tesla doesn't just press a button and bang, get back to peak production volume. So it's not only the production lost directly during those 22-ish days of shutdown, but there's also lost production when Tesla's slowly ramping back up to previous levels. When you factor this all in, it is about 100 thousand units of total production lost as a result of the insane shutdowns. Most of the other Wall Street analysts are talking about like 50, 60 thousand units lost and I'm like, what? Huh? Anyway, however, we believe the record production in June is a sign that Shanghai is ramping back up well and that the company made progress recently at its Berlin and Austin factories. Old man Sachs go on to say they believe Tesla's production trajectory will continue to be a focus on the earnings call. They also anticipate a few other key areas on the call. Progress with the 4680 battery cell, I mean, duh. We did hear from Elon in an interview in May that Tesla was having some challenges ramping up 4680 cell production. I mean, nobody should be surprised about that. It's a brand new technology. This is why Tesla had a fallback plan, but Elon mentioned in this interview the fallback plan, unfortunately, got a little bit fucked because the whole shutdowns in China means the stuff they needed for the fallback plan couldn't actually get shipped. So there's that. Round of applause to Shanghai for not only fucking their own economy, but the global economy as well. Good job, guys. How's that COVID zero going, you fuckwits? They're also expecting more updates on the outlook for semi and component supply, demand trends and backlog. Again, I mean, Tesla might mention that the demand's pretty big, but they don't need to. I mean, it's a waste of fucking breath. We all know, just go to a Tesla website, change your region to any region in the world, spec up an order and look at the wait time. Then think, huh, if I'm ordering now and have to wait that long, that means there's lots of other people that are, huh, that's a lot of demand. They also expect there'll be more info about automotive gross margins, giving multiple price increases this year, but also the cost inflation. If Tesla have timed things relatively well, they shouldn't really be impacted by any cost inflation because they're passing that along. But the thing here is Tesla's being proactive with their price increases because of the massive delay between when customer orders a vehicle and actually takes delivery. Tesla's doing their best to align their price increases and actually have them land when the cost increases land as well. This is never going to be perfect, but they are doing their best. They're also expecting more info on the Berlin and Austin ramps plus FSD. Here's where things again continue to get just Bizarre. We reduce our full year delivery estimates to 1.401 million from 1.408 million to reflect Q2 deliveries. Again, I just want to take the time to highlight. I don't know, maybe I'm just really bullish. I do have an optimism bias, but 1.4 million units for the whole year. Please give me some of what you are smoking. Even my bear case for deliveries is about 1.46 million. And again, my bear case is a 3% probability. Cluster f after cluster f after train wreck, after things going wrong, after things going wrong. Maybe I'm too optimistic or maybe everyone else is gonna be wrong again. We'll find out. We reduce our Q2 EPS to 68 cents from $1.24 prior to reflect lower deliveries and auto gross margin. Margins. We now estimate 25.5% down from 26.5% for the gross automotive margins. Final paragraph here. We are buy rated on Tesla shares. Our 12 month price target on Tesla stock of $1,000 per share is unchanged. Key downside risks to our thesis relate to the rate of EV adoption. <laughs> This is a key upside risk. Everyone's underestimating EV adoption. I mean, uh, you can delete this one, guys. You're way off the fucking mark and in the wrong direction. I mean, I understand. I'm oh, sure you've got to put this as a risk. What if EV adoption is slower than everyone's expecting? But <laughs> here's the thing. EV adoption is going to be faster than everyone's expecting and no one's expecting that. Another risk, which is relatively fair. The ability of Tesla to meet this demand given supply chain constraints. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be challenging, but Tesla's pretty competent at navigating challenging situations. We have a very long track record of them doing exactly that. Another risk is what model Y demand. <laughs> I mean, seriously, pass the fucking joint, guys. Model Y long term is probably going to do about 3 million units a year. Count on it. Increased competition in EV. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to take some of these seriously. Yeah, the competition is coming all over itself. We know. The automotive cycle, yep, irrelevant to Tesla. This is a disruptive technology. Forget what you think you know about the automotive cycle. It does not apply to this new technology. Key person risk, fair point. As I've said in the past, however, especially, I'm asked this quite often on my Patreon Q&As. What happens if Elon dies or disappears? Tesla will be fine. They won't move as fast. They won't do as much, but they'll be fine. They're already 
in an unassailable position. They've already won the decade. With or without Elon, Tesla's already won the decade. The internal control environment, okay, and operational risks associated with Tesla's high degree of vertical integration. And this is a fair point. If they do everything yourself and you fuck up lots of things doing yourselves, yeah, that's a problem. But this is also actually a massive anti-risk. The fact that they're scraping the bottom of the barrel so much to be highlighting, well, Tesla's so vertically integrated, that could be a risk. It's pretty hilarious. Tesla's extreme level of vertical integration is an enormous competitive advantage. Now, I acknowledge if they fuck up a million things, it's a problem but they're unlikely to fuck up a million things at the same time, meaning this is a massive advantage. You really do need to scrape the bottom of the barrel to come up with any reasonable risks to the Tesla thesis. What if an asteroid hits one of the factories? Oh yeah, that's definitely a risk too. Good one. Let's add that to the list. So the key takeaways from today's video, as we saw, the data shows the US automotive industry is literally imploding at this point in time. Sales are collapsing. Of course, the automotive manufacturers are either gonna pretend that they don't know why, or oh, it's just supply chain, everything's gonna be fine, just give it a few quarters, we get the parts, we'll keep selling the cars. It's not gonna happen. Most of the world doesn't really see what's happening. This will play out over the next six, 12, 18, maybe even 24 months. At some point, people go, oh, huh, the, the, the sales aren't actually rebounding, even though they've got the parts now. That's a bit weird. Does anyone know why that would be happening? Yeah, EV adoption. Disruption. Mainstream finance media getting it completely wrong about Tesla again. What a surprise. Thankfully, there was somebody on that Bloomberg segment to set the record straight. And the Wall Street stock analysts continue to be a mixed bag, understanding elements of Tesla, understanding elements of Tesla's business, but then also being completely off the fucking mark. Goldman Sachs, what the f***? $14.10 of EPS in 2024 for Tesla. Possibly one of the most embarrassing forecasts from any of the big firms on Wall Street. But once again, I find myself repeating this very important phrase. There is a gigantic disconnect between the consensus opinion about what Tesla is going to do in the coming years, especially around earnings, how much money they're printing, and how much money they will actually print. Consensus is here. Tesla's here. It doesn't even fit on the screen. You can't even see where they are. And that gap is called opportunity, in my opinion. And just finally, given the insanity in the macroeconomic environment lately, I've covered this a trillion times, there's a Twitter deal, all sorts of shit that's been pounding Tesla stock down that has nothing the f to do with the company. Here's a passage from a book I was reading last night. By the way, I do highly recommend everyone check this book out. Have a listen and do so through the lens of Tesla specifically. You'll find some very interesting stuff in this book. Q clip. In times of general market pessimism, this kind of undiscounting of some of the very finest investments can reach rather extreme levels. When it does, it affords the patient investor, with the ability to distinguish between current market image and true facts, some of the most attractive opportunities common stocks can offer for handsome long-term profits at relatively small risk. A little bit of food for thought. And just finally, don't forget, you can join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment. Just open submissions for the latest exclusive Q&A. So get your submissions in now. They won't be open for too long. And a reminder that all Patreon supporters at all levels get up-to-date access to my Tesla stock price targets out over the next decade, plus an archive of well over 100 exclusive Q&A videos and loads of other content and perks. So I'll see you over on Patreon. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.